Okay, as most of you guys know, Imavov fought Adesanya, hit him with a really good overhand. So we're gonna take a look at some of the anatomy and biomechanics associated and kinesiology associated with the punch and then also associated with the contact here and what potentially contributed to that loss of consciousness. So when Imavov shifts his center of mass forward, he loads that front foot and he's internally rotating in the closed chain at the hip. Okay, so this, this really sets up a nice kind of kinetic chain. The way, kinetic chain is a very ambiguous term, but the way that I like to describe it is the ability to transfer force, or tra excuse me, transfer energy th from the ground using your body through the extremity whenever we're striking. So in a fighting context, that's how I like to describe it. So as he's rotating on his front leg into hip internal rotation, let's look at the hips in relation to the shoulders. So draw a line from hip bone to hip bone and then draw a line from shoulder to shoulder. In that transverse plane, they're moving relatively in sync. Okay, so they're not separating like something we would see in like a, like a left, like a lead hook. Typically when we're throwing punches with the back, with the hand in the back of our stance, we don't see that separation, at least in the transverse plane. But when we broke down the overhand, particularly whenever we saw Emmett absolutely crushing Mitchell with the overhand, and that everybody remembers that overhand. I mean, that dude almost lost his life. So whenever we see punches like that, that side bending and rotation away from the side of the overhand actually helps create some of that whipping effect that we see, which we'll talk about here in a second. That whipping effect is along the muscles of the, the front of the shoulder called the anterior delt, anterior deltoid, the anterior belly of the deltoid, and the pec major, performing a muscle called horizontal adduction. Typically, we don't see our hand going above our hand like that, but the way that the view is and the way that the body is situated, he's actually performing shoulder horizontal adduction rather than some other movement. That's Whenever we throw a hook, that's typically what we're doing. So just a really good transfer of energy from the ground through that hip internal rotation, really good show of hip mobility here. No hip and shoulder separation in the transverse plane, but definitely some in the frontal plane as it's created by trunk side bending and then that you know in unison rotation. And then it creates that really good whip for the muscles in the front, throwing that right overhand right and landing right on the button for Adesanya. Now this view is gonna show us a better view of two components of what we talked about earlier. So we talked about that trunk side bending and rotation. You can see that most, most of our side bending and rotational movements happen around that thoracolumbar spine, meaning that the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine meet. This is where the facet joints of our spine allow for a lot of rotation. So muscles like the quadratus lumborum and the lats and the internal and external oblique are assisting in side bending to the same side uh, and then rotating to the same side as well. So really good control of the trunk and then that you can see that whipping effect here, that stretch reflex that happens on the muscles of the anterior delt and the pec, we can see that the shoulder lags behind just a little bit. So just the arm that he's throwing, as he loads that arm back, that's an eccentric elongation of those muscles. Switches from the eccentric to the concentric called the amortization phase. And I'll link, if you want a, a better description of the stretch reflex, I'll link that in the description below. And then a concentric contraction or shortening of the muscle for a more powerful movement after that eccentric elongation. Now, shift your attention to the shoulder blade. This is a really good view of something we call protraction. And this is, we've seen this a lot in a lot of the other movements that we've broken down. We see the scapula moving away from the spine or scapular abduction. It's a component of a, of a movement called protraction and it's typically performed mainly by the serratus anterior. Now there are a lot of other mus muscles that have to be, uh, that contribute to scapular stabilization whenever you get that energy transfer from the thing that you're hitting down the arm, which have to be engaged. But we see his shoulders or his shoulder blade kind of lying flat onto the thorax so that we know that those shoulder stabilizers and the muscles of the shoulder girdle are nice and contracted upon impact. All right, so with this view, I want you to watch very closely and pay attention to one thing, because another view, we're gonna pay attention to another thing. So there's one motion here that I want you to see. Whenever he makes contact on Izzy's face, on, right on the button, right on that jaw, watch his left ear here. His left ear gets much closer to that left shoulder. This is a motion called side bending, all right? So, or lateral flexion. And I also want you to, I know it's a slow-mo, but 
notice how quickly he goes into that side bending. This is what we think contributes to that loss of consciousness. Whenever somebody gets hit on a button and creates a lot of that whipping motion, that angular acceleration and deceleration into either side bending or rotation, in this situation both, causes that really big mechanical traction and tension on the neuron, specifically the axon of the neuron, uh, and it, a, a phenomenon called mechanoporation occurs. Essentially, it creates a, a, an environment for hyperexcitability that ends up in the loss of consciousness. So this view shows really good side bending, and if we let it continue, we can see in this view, watch the rotation. So he's in a little bit of left cervical rotation here, and as he gets hit, he moves into probably at least 45 to 50 degrees of right, maybe even 60 if we're being generous, of right cervical rotation very quickly. So not only, and this is what they're talking about when they talk about angular acceleration and deceleration, he's not actually moving linearly in one plane. So he's not moving front to back, he's not moving only in the horizontal, or only in cervical rotation, or only in lateral flexion. He's moving in a combination of all three of these. And so you can really see side bending and rotation a lot better here. And of course, he only proves the theory more because as soon as he got hit, he, you can see his eyes kind of roll back into his head and cross. Uh, really good overhand from Imavov. It sucks to see. You know, Izzy get hit like that if you're a fan of Izzy, but you know, this is what happens in this sport.